so hello again and we are now in uh, part 2 of module 9 which uh, will cover the topic on gas chromatography gas chromatography is a technique for analyzing volatile substances or substances that can be converted into a volatile derivative okay so um, one of the limitations of gas chromatography as a, uh, um, a, a technique in uh, analytical chemistry is that yun yan, no? it's limited to volatile substances. So normally gas chromatography is used in the uh, petroleum industry for the analysis of uh, petroleum products or um, in flavors or fragrances, perfumeries, um, even for uh, pesticides, no? uh, residual pesticide analysis, you can use gas chromatography. Uh, in comparison to most uh, liquid chromatographic uh, methods, in GC, especially the, with the use of the capillary column, it gives you uh, the highest number of theoretical plates, which we will um, explain later on. Now, shown here is the uh, block diagram for a gas chromatograph. So you have to memorize this. No? Ito yung mga importante uh, bagay na kabisado dapat sa instrumental analysis. No? So you have your carrier gas which contains your mobile phase. You have the flow regulators to control the flow rate of the mobile phase. And then you have your sample injection chamber, the column which is the heart of the chromatograph and your detector all of which are contained inside the oven, no? uh, what you call the column oven. All right. So remember that when you do gas chromatography, the temperature inside the uh, column oven is actually elevated All right, because it's important that your sample, your analytes, are in their gaseous or vapor phase. All right. So yun yung, yung uh, unique sa gas chromatography. Then of course you have the data system and display uh, and then you have your flow meter for monitoring your flow rate. So first you have your carrier gas. The carrier gas used in uh, gas chromatography are inert gases. No? So examples are helium, nitrogen, and argon. Um, other gases that are usually uh, equipped no? Uh, in the gas chrome are your hydrogen gas and methane which uh, serves as makeup gases for or uh, fuel supply for some of the detectors that are based on flame no? which is your flame ionization detector no? so your fuel non can be hydrogen gas or methane hydrogen gas can also be used as a mobile phase okay um, when you're using for example TCD no? thermal conductivity detector so the choice of uh, carrier gas is based on the type of detector that you want to use. Now the unique thing about ga uh, carrier gases no, or the mobile phase for gas chromatography is that it is inert, meaning to say that it does not interact with the sample. The sole purpose of uh, your carrier gas is just to carry the uh, sample across the from uh, the column, no? the chromatographic column, so that the uh, volatilized components will be separated as it passes through the stationary phase. Next, you have your sample injection port. In gas chromatography, the sample is injected as a discrete plug of vapor. All right. So, um, for gas chromatographs, um, you can actually uh, inject your sample either as a gaseous, a gaseous phase na, or even as a liquid, no? a volatile liquid. No? Because the temperature of the sample injection port is elevated to a temperature wherein, even if you have a liquid sample, it will be vaporized already inside the sample injection port. So, to uh, introduce the sample, Okay, in your uh, sample injection port, you need a micro syringe. Okay, so if your sample is a liquid sample, 
uh, typical volumes are 0.1 to 1 microliters. So normally it's made from glass, no? Glass with a uh, stainless steel plunger instead of a uh, rubberized uh, plunger. Okay? There are uh, there are also gas syringes for gaseous samples whose volumes are a little bit larger compared to your uh, liquid micro syringes. Okay? The injection port as I mentioned earlier, the temperature is already uh, high enough no, to vaporize the sample because it's important that the form of the sample is in vapor form once it uh, goes into the uh, column. Alright, so normally the injection port is set at least 50 degrees centigrade higher the or higher or above the boiling point of the lowest boiling component in the mixture. And again, no, we want to ensure that the sample is completely vaporized before it enters the column. There are uh, three common types of uh, sample injection ports. So the first one, you have your split injection. So the split injection is uh, used uh, whenever you're using a capillary uh, column. So this is preferred when you have um, when your analyte no, in the sample is greater than 0.1%. So, ibig sabihin, medyo mataas yung concentration ng analyte dun sa sample. So, remember, uh, we, don't, we don't want to overload your uh, chromatograph no? because this will lead to um, very high peak intensities and even yung fronting uh, deformity, no? na tinatawag, eh, de uh, peak deformity. So, with split injection, only 0.2 to 2% of the injected sample goes into the column. The rest are uh, swept away as waste. Okay? So, typically, the injection port temperature is set at 350 degrees centigrade. So, yun nga yung isang limitation ng gas chrome pala, no? Hindi siya pwede for uh, thermally labile substances. Pag sabi thermally labeled substances, these are uh, substances that degrades at higher temperature. no? Or they, they usually degrade even before reaching their uh, respective boiling points. Okay? So, yun yung sa limitation. Now, the split ratio can be um, controlled no? or changed. No? So, usually it's between 50 is to 1 to around 600 is to 1, no? depending on the uh, concentration of the analyte in the sample. Next, you have your splitless injection. This is used for trace analysis when the analyte concentration in the sample is very low. So, sabi nga dito, less than 0.1%. No? So, if you have uh, uh, a low amount of the analyte in the sample, you cannot afford to uh, split the injected sample. Okay? So, uh, the injection port has the same features with the split injection but with the absence of a mixing chamber. No? Yung typical uh, gas chromatograph nowadays, yung uh, sample injection port niya can be readily uh, switched between split and splitless modes. So, wala ka ng problema halos doon. Now, uh, since uh, dilute or rel relatively lower yung uh, analyte concentration mo, uh, larger volumes are injected no, relative to your split, uh, split injection. So, mga around 2 microliters. And you, uh, normally, we use a lower injection temperature, no, mga around 220 degrees centigrade. So, again, para maalala, split for concentrated, more concentrated samples. And splitless injection, you use that for trace analysis no, for lower concentration ng analyte sa sample. Lastly, you have your on-column injection. Uh, this is used for thermally labile samples. So, yung, uh, mga samples that usually decomposes at temperatures above their uh, boiling points. Okay? So, you cannot afford to uh, use a sample injection method that requires higher temperature than the column temperature. So, here, uh, you are directly injecting the sample okay, into the column wherein the column temperature is 
uh, is equal no, doon sa column oven temperature mismo. So, the vaporization takes place at the temperature of the column, sabi natin, which avoids overheating of the sample during the vaporization stage. So, next, let's go now to your columns. Um, there are two types of uh, columns for gas chromatography. So, you have your pack columns and your capillary columns. So, capillary columns are also called your open tubular columns, no? So, for pack columns, uh, okay, alright, so, normally, they're made from uh, stainless steel or glass, okay, nowadays, I, 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 I don't see uh, pack columns that are made from glass anymore, no, araw kasi ito yung uso, no, uh, nowadays, it's more of the stainless steel variety, alright, uh, usual internal diameter is around 1.5 millimeters with length of around 1 to 3 meters, no? so, they are coiled so that they would fit inside the column oven. Now, you can use solid stationary faces or liquid stationary faces bonded or immobilized on a solid support matrix. Okay? Ayan. So, yan. Contains polo support materials with particle diameters 50 to 500 millimeters. Alright? A common um, support material is what you refer to as your diatomaceous earth. So, ito yung itsura niya under an electron microscope. No? So, this is very useful for immobilizing liquid stationary phase because of their um, uh, uniform uh, particle size and their porosity. So, diatomaceous earth is uh, usually made from silica and these are actually the remains of uh, microscopic organisms. No? Ito yung parang... Uh, shell or yung yeah, pinaka shell no ng micro ng uh, uh, microorganism na iyon so which is called diatoms okay so this is what we call diatomaceous earth so next you have your capillary or open tubular columns so these are actually made from fused silica with internal diameters ranging from 30 to around 500 micrometers and length of around 3 to 10 meters. No? So, mahabang mahaba yung column. And as we uh, shown earlier, in general, the longer the column length, the higher the number of theoretical plates. That is why typically for capillary columns, yung theoretical plates ito, umaabot up to uh, millions, no? yung magnitude ng number of theoretical plates. So, basically here, uh, it's an empty tube, okay, very narrow, empty tube, wherein the stationary phase is located on the insides no, of the tube. No? So, ito, no? so, ito yung, yung uh, stationary phase natin. Now, the material, alright, the tube itself is made uh, from fused silica and coated with a polyimide coating to uh, improve its uh, thermal uh, properties no, ng uh, fused silica. Okay, so because of its high uh, number of theoretical plates, it has greater separation efficiency compared to your packed columns. Alright? So, again, the stationary phase covers the inner surface of the column. Okay? So, the, the next slide will show you some of the different types of capillary columns. So, here are some of the uh, different types of capillary columns. So, you have your wall-coated open tubular, uh, bonded phase open tubular, alright, uh, both of which are liquid, okay, uh, liquid stationary phases, okay. Uh, for wall-coated, yung uh, liquid stationary phase directly uh, coated lang, no, doon sa inner walls ng capillary. Whereas for bonded phase, the liquid stationary phase is chemically bonded onto the inner surface no of your um fused silica column for porous layer this is a solid stationary phase no so you have uh, solid phase particles uh, with defined porosity all right evenly adhered no uh, on the inside of the column and then you have your support coated open tubular so these are uh, solid particles okay coated with the liquid stationary phase. No? So, these are the four uh, typical types of uh, capillary columns. Uh, well, uh, 
um, the advantage of bonded face over your wall coated is that na prevent yung tinatawag na bleeding no or mas mataas mas matagal rather yung uh, expected column life so bleeding happens when the uh, liquid stationary face is uh, degraded no or being stripped away from the uh, inside of the column so normally this happens no uh, after repeated use no kasi consumable lang columns eh, no so after repeated use or uh, if you're using too high temperatures no? uh, very high temperatures no higher than the recommended maximum temperature for that particular column no so magde-degrade yung stationary face no but for bonded face open tubular mas mataas yung uh, uh, column life no because yung stationary face natin is bonded no chemically doon sa surface ng ating uh, column so here are some of the uh, typical uh, liquid faces okay stationary faces and even the typical solid supports no used for gas chromatography so these solid supports are used for pack columns no uh, yeah so here are some of their uh, of the examples no so yung cr crush fire break nung araw pa ito no but usually they they like to use yung yeah, diatomaceous earth ayan no diatomaceous earth or uh, even alumina in silica okay uh, okay and you modify this you can modify this with liquid stationary phases uh, the stationary phases for gas chrome are rated based on their polarity no so it's either you use non polar stationary phases semi polar or polar stationary phases no so if you're using non polar stationary phases okay and you have this uh, mixture uh, of components so mangyayari ang, ang unang may elute ay yung polar components before the non polar components because the non polar components of the sample will be more retained by a non polar stationary phase no ika nga yung light dissolves light okay vice versa if you're using a polar stationary phase then the more polar components will be retained more no while the non polar components will be uh, eluting faster all right so mas lower yung kanilang retention time okay so here ito naman yung uh, common stationary phases no liquid stationary phases in uh, capillary gas chromatography so again they are rated based on their polarities no non polar or uh, semi polar intermediate polarity or yung mga polar strongly polar uh, types now what you have to take note also are the temperature range no yung operational temperature range for this column if you're going to use this column beyond the uh, recommended temp uh, operating temperatures, pwedeng masira agad yung column, no? Mag uh, bleed out yung stationary phase, magde-degrade agad yung iyong stationary phase. So it's very important, no, to to uh, really follow, no, yung uh, required operating temperature. Also, uh, especially for very polar stationary phases it's important that we uh, ensure that after our analysis everything no all of the components of the sample even those that we are not interested in are completely removed from the column okay uh, if you have polar stationary phase may tendency kasi ito na uh, maka-attract ng mga polar impurities or constituents ng sample no at hindi sila agad-agad magi elute no even pagkatapos ng ating chromatographic run so that is why uh, a common practice in gas chrome is tinatawag na baking okay wherein after the uh, this analysis before you you leave no you uh, elevate yung temperature ng column oven while the carrier gas is on no in sense dumadaloy pa rin yung carrier gas for some time and this is to ensure that uh, any adhering components are removed from the column so next you have your column oven so again uh, the column temperature is a very important parameter in gas chromatography 
Alright, so the optimum temperature is usually determined by the boiling point of the components of the sample and also the required resolution. Okay? Now, the, if the, temp the temperature equal to or slightly above the average boiling point of the sample will give, will usually give a reasonable elution time. Okay? Now, if magkakalapit yung boiling points ng components of your sample, no? if, they are, uh, if the boiling points of the components are close with each other, okay, then what you can do is what you call your isothermal run. So, sa isothermal run, you are using one uh, temperature setting. Okay? One temperature setting across your run. No? So, if you, if you plot the uh, elution time versus the temperature, constant yung temperature na ginagamit. However, a problem arises kapag ka hindi magkakalapit no? ang uh, temperature, boiling point temperatures ng components of your sample. So, what will happen, no? kung magkakalayo sila, is kunwari, no? if the uh, tawag ito? If you have, say, two components, no? So, you have two components na uh, low boiling point, alright? And then, you have one component na uh, high boiling point, no? If you're going to use, uh, say, a high temperature setting, okay? What will happen is, usually, is that these two components will elute together na magkadikit, okay? Magkadikit sila. Now, if you use a low temperature setting, maaaring maghiwalay itong uh, two components nito, low boiling point components. Pero itong isang ito, na high boiling point component, maaaring dumikit no? dito sa uh, low boiling point components. No? So, to solve this problem, okay, they use temperature programming. No? So, so, for temperature programming, what you do, no? across the uh, run time, nung iyong chromatographic analysis is that you vary no, the temperature. Oh, yeah. So, meron kang uh, para mga ramp rates. No? So, meron kang ramp and then meron kang uh, steady state na temperature. So, by using temperature programming, okay, we are able to improve and accelerate gas chromatographic separations. Okay? So, yung sasabi ko kanina pala no, sa isothermal run, Parikan natin, no? So, if you use moderate temperature, it will give you good resolution, no? For low boiling compounds, but not for high boiling compounds, no? It will uh, take longer elution time, okay? But if you use high temperature, man, this is more rapid for, uh, or in, and better resolution for higher boiling compounds, but will give you poor uh, resolution or poor peak separation, for low boiling components, no? So, doon lumalabas, doon pumapasok rather, yung ating temperature programming. Next, let's discuss the different detectors for gas chromatography. So, the first one is your thermal conductivity detector or TCD. And this is the universal detector for gas chromatography. So, pag sabing uh, universal detector, hindi siya selective. Okay? So, kung ano man yung uh, mag-pass through doon sa iyong uh, detector, magka-develop ito ng detector signal. Okay? So, the carrier gas, sabi natin kanina, no? Merong, uh, yung pag-PD, yung, pag yung carrier gas depende sa detector. So, if you're using TCD, ideal carrier gases are your um, hydrogen gas or helium gas. Okay? So, yung uh, response on TCD is based on what you call thermal conductivity. Okay? Or yung conductivity ng gases. Okay? So, when your mobile phase, no, it passes through the detector, in the absence of the analyte, you have the highest uh, thermal conductivity registering dun sa detector. That's why you use hydrogen gas or helium. Kasi sila yung merong uh, matataas na baseline thermal conductivity. Now, once uh, carrier gas uh, carrying an analyte, no, an analyte or a component of the sample passes through the detector, there, there will be a decrease in thermal conductivity. So, yung decrease in thermal conductivity is proportional 
to the amount of the analyte passing through the uh, detector. Uh, another name for TCD is your catarometer. Um, the linear response range is in the magnitude of uh, 10 to the 5th. All right. Uh, however, no, ito yung general uh, trend no, for universal detectors is that among the least, they have the lowest sensitivity. No? Mababa yung sensitivity nila kasi nga, uh, they, they don't have, uh, they're not very selective no? dun sa uh, analyte no? where they uh, generate a response. So the sensitivity is around 10 to the negative 3 uh, grams per ml. However, uh, one advantage of TCD is that they are non-destructive. No? So if you have uh, a procedure where you want to uh, collect the eluted components, then you can use TCD. However, it is not recommended no, to use TCD for capillary columns. No? So normally, sa pack columns ito. Ginagamit. Although, uh, by experience, nakakita na ako nang gumagamit ito using capillary columns din. Next, you have your flame ionization detector and this is one of the common detectors then no, for uh, gas chromatography especially for the analysis of organic substances. Okay? So, this is selective towards combustible organic compounds. So, basically, uh, so basically you have your a flame, all right, uh, which is uh, generated from uh, hydrogen gas fuel and air. No? So, normally, if you have FID, uh, meron kang additional cylinders ng uh, compressed air or oxygen, saka ng hydrogen gas, no? to create yung flame. Now, when your uh, sample component, which is an organic compound, passes to the FID detector, there will be combustion. And remember that combustion is actually a redox process. No? So, with combustion, you're actually oxidizing your uh, molecule. And this oxidation will produce electrons. And these electrons are detected no? by your collector detector. No? So, ito yung nag-generate ng response. So, proportional again yung response doon sa uh, dami, no? sa amount ng iyong uh, organic compound. So, typical uh, carrier gas, you have your helium and nitrogen gas. Uh, however, uh, since we have selective ito, no? it does not respond to non-combustible gases no? like water, carbon dioxide, uh, SOx and NOx gases. No? So, this is not suitable for uh, the analysis of these pollutant gases. Okay? Um, it has uh, a decent, no? very decent uh, sensitivity no? and uh, large linear response. And it also gives you low noise, no? low background noise. Selective siya towards, again, sa mga combustible substances. However, this is sample destructive. No? Kasi nga, sinusunod niyo yung sample. Uh, compared to your TCD, it has 100 times uh, better detection no? than your TCD. Next, you have your electron capture detector or ECD. So, it is a very selective detector towards molecules that contains electronegative functional groups such as halogens, peroxides, quinines, and nitro groups. Hence, this detector is very um, useful for uh, detecting, say, pesticides, no? which are almost always highly halogenated. All right? So, for the trace analysis of pesticides in um, soil, water, or even uh, vegetables or fruits, no? Normally, uh, if you if you want to use GC for the analysis of such uh, uh, compounds, you use an ECD detector, no? so trace analysis. Okay, so typical carrier gas, you have uh, hydrogen gas, helium, or nitrogen gas. Uh, one thing to remember about ECD is that it uses a radioactive uh, source, no? yung uh, nickel-63. Hence, pagka nililinis itong detector na ito, you're not supposed to open uh, the detector because you have a radioactive source uh, which is uh, shielded by a uh, lead shielding. Okay? 
So, yung ginagawa nito, no, yung uh, radioactive source, so the emitted uh, particles from the radioactive source hits the electrons no, from the uh, electronegative functional groups. No? Kaya nga kailangan may mga lone pair of electrons yung functional group na yun. So, this uh, knocked off uh, electrons will then be collected by the collector electrode. So, this will generate an electrical response. Okay? So, sabi ko nga, common ito for pesticides analysis and even for uh, some persistent organic pollutants, no? such as yung mga polychlorinated biphenyls, yung mga PCBs, or even yung mga uh, tawag dito, mga ibang uh, plasticizers, kunwari, no? such as uh, bisphenol A. Next, we have your thermionic ionization detector, which is also called your nitrogen phosphorus detector. So, as the name implies, this is uh, a very uh, selective and sensitive detector towards uh, samples that contains nitrogen and phosphorus. Okay, so the common carrier gas is helium. And it is uh, very sensitive no, towards phosphorus and nitrogen. Now, in fact, compared to uh, FID, this is 500 times more sensitive to phosphorus-containing substances and uh, 50 times more sensitive to nitrogen-containing substances. That is why this is commonly used for the analysis of pesticides, um, fertilizers, and some pharmaceuticals. Alright, so inside the TID, you have an alkali bead usually made from uh, rubidium. No? Uh, may rubidium bead yan, no? which is consumable uh, actually. So over time, it uh, degrades, no? so you have to uh, replace that. So again, it's more for uh, pesticides and antibiotics analysis because this... Uh, substances usually contains nitrogen and phosphorus uh, functional groups. Next, you have your flame photometric detector and this is uh, used for uh, halide, sulfur, or phosphorus containing compounds. So, as you can see from the diagram, this is actually based on um, light emission. No? Uh, yeah, emission. No? So, uh, compounds that contains halide, sulfur, or phosphorus will usually emit uh, signature uh, emissions no? uh, during combustion no? so flame. Alright? So, common uh, carrier gases, uh, nitrogen and helium, uh, yun yan, no? based on flame emission, and this utilizes a uh, photomultiplier tube. So, this is quite uh, sensitive no? as a uh, detector. So, lastly, you have your mass spectrometer. Although, well, not, not con considered as a detector per se, but a uh, hyphenated technique. No? It's called GCMS. No? So, with a hyphenated instrument, you are connecting two or more uh, standalone uh, instrument, no? analytical instrument, to combine their uh, respective uh, advantages. Okay, so with the uh, gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, you have the high separation capacity of a gas chromatograph, and then you couple this with the ability of a mass spectrometer to identify unknown compounds. No, so this is very useful for unknown uh, determination. Okay, so any uh, compounds analyte can be uh, detected using your GCMS. All right, common uh, carrier gases you have your argon or helium. Okay, so ito yung ito na hyphenated or means na tawag yun itong uh, tandem uh, instrumentation. And uh, this is used for structure elucidation of organic compounds. Now, when you compare the sensitivity with the other detectors, this is the most sensitive uh, detector. Alright, lowest LOD, lowest uh, LOQ, no? so mataas nga sensitivity. Alright, so um, one thing to remember about uh, mass, mass spectrometers hyphenated to EGC is that the transfer line, alright, 
allows for the uh, discrete transfer, no? So, uh, sorry, transferring discrete amounts of the sample, no? From the uh, gas chromatograph. Kasi remember, kung masyadong sensitive ang detector or yung instrument, normally, it entails na you uh, introduce a low amount of the sample. Alright? So, the mass analyzer um, used it, well, it depends on the unit, no? Meron kang uh, GCMS TOF, no? Which uses your uh, time of flight mass analyzer or usually, you can also use quadrupole. Alright? In the literature, you can also find the uh, multi-tandem instrument, no? GCMS MS or GCMS MS MS. So, ibig sabihin nun, you are equipping the uh, instrument with two or three mass spectrometers uh, units or two or three mass analyzers actually. Alright? Ano ba? Mass spectrometers pala. Stand alone. Okay? So, the usually, if you want, if you're using multiple mass spectrometers, uh, it is usually for the analysis of large molecules. No? So, you fragment uh, large molecules sequentially. Okay? Using the succeeding mass spectrometers and then try to elucidate the uh, structure of that uh, big molecule. Okay, so some notes on GC separations. So, your elution trend, important ito, no? uh, this usually appears in the uh, board exam no? frequently. Alright, so if the elution trend no? for polar compounds would be relative, of course, no? to the station, well, in general, no? Station, uh, relative to stationary phase for polarity. No? So, if you're using a uh, polar stationary phase, sabi natin kanina, uh, polar compounds will be more retained, whereas uh, non-polar compounds will have faster elution times no? or lower retention times. Vice versa, if you're using uh, non-polar stationary phases, okay, so the non-polar components will be retained more whereas polar compounds will be eluted faster okay now if you're analyzing non-polar compounds and you're using uh, yeah no uh, non-polar uh, stationary phase you know, semi-polar uh, another feature is that the elution trend tends to be uh, relative to the boiling points of these compounds so, those that have lower boiling points will elute faster, whereas those that have higher boiling points will be uh, retained more inside the column. So, you have to remember these uh, trends. Okay? Now, I mentioned earlier yung bleeding na tinatawag. So, again, this refers to the decomposition of the stationary phase at elevated temperatures. Okay? So, to prevent bleeding, kasi to, to uh, lengthen the uh, life of the column, so, uh, one is to use the thinnest possible stationary phase, okay, that can accommodate your uh, sample requirement. Use the shortest possible column. And, of course, no, use oxygen-free gases. No? Uh, by the way, Yung carrier gas, okay, bago yan na uh, mapunta sa gas chromatograph, dumadaan muna yan sa series of sieves and filters, okay? Because you want to remove uh, moisture and uh, oxygen, alright, from the carrier gas because these uh, substances can greatly deteriorate your stationary phase, no? Hence, uh, shortening yung uh, serviceable life ng column. Okay? So, meron mga sieves yan, no? Before pumunta sa gas chromatograph. Um, in general, the lower the internal diameter of your column, the greater the efficiency and the corresponding resolution. Okay? Uh, however, it also leads to higher retention time. Okay, so mataas nga resolution, pero higher your retention time. Again, uh, analytes must be volatilized and they should not degrade at high temperatures. So, ito yung uh, paulit-ulit na sasabi natin yung requirement ng uh, gas chromatography. 
Okay, so here are some uh, sample preparation techniques for gas chromatography. Um, normally, what we want to do for gas chromatography is to uh, initially you know, try to purify the sample first. No? The sample clean up at no? You remove uh, unwanted uh, components first, all right, and to try to uh, produce a cleaner chromatogram. No? Kasi kapag masyadong marami yung components ng sample, you will have a very messy chromatogram no? showing all the peaks corresponding to these uh, components. Okay, and another purpose of sample preparation is also to pre-concentrate your analyte no? in the sample so that you will uh, you can have a uh, better uh, sensitivity sa analysis. Uh, also, another purpose then no? uh, is to convert then your uh, sample natin, or you uh, sorry, you analyte natin into a form that can be processed in a gas chromatograph. No? So, kunwari, may, subs may analyte ka na uh, thermally labile or meron ka analyte na low volatility. Okay? So, if you want to improve yung property niya to be uh, compatible with gas chromatography, then you do some uh, sample preparation techniques. Okay? So, first, you have your liquid-liquid extraction. Alright? So, ito yung solvent partitioning lang ito. So, typically, you do this if your analyte is in aqueous phase. No? So, as much as, well as possible, we don't want to inject uh, water-based samples no, dun sa gas chromatograph. Alright? So, yeah. So, you transfer the uh, analyte into the organic phase because the organic phase is more volatile. Alright? So, mas madali siyang uh, maalis sa gas, chromato sa gas chromatography. Okay? Next, you have your solid phase extraction, micro-extraction. No? So, it uses uh, an SPE car uh, cartridge, tinatawag. So, yung sa loob ng cartridge na yun, contains parang stationary phase din, no? that uh, selectively retains your analyte. No? So, it's a, it's a cartridge, like a tube. So, yung sample, uh, pinapadaan doon sa cartridge na yun, wherein the analyte is retained inside the cartridge. Alright? Then, afterwards, you uh, pour in a releasing solvent that will dislodge the adhering sample, uh, sorry, analyte doon sa uh, loob ng cartridge. No? So, in effect, you were able to remove the uh, other impurities of the sample. At the same time, you were able to pre-concentrate your analyte. Okay? Next, to you have your headspace analysis. No? So, uh, remember, no, for liquid samples or for analyte, volatile analyte is solving a liquid, th that particular analyte is always in equilibrium no? with both its liquid dissolved phase and the vapor phase all right so with head space head space analysis no the vapor uh, is the term is a sample and determined no so normally ito merong uh, carousel ito na merong uh, para mini uh, oven no or mini uh, hot plate okay which initially heats up the sample usually contained in a vial all right, and then uh, after some time, no, uh, you uh, aspirate, no, aspirate out the vapor from the head space, no, and then you inject that vapor into your gas chromatograph. Okay. Yeah. So the head space vapor is sampled by a gas syringe or uh, or an automatic uh, injector. Okay. Then lastly, and uh, not lastly, so next you have your Persian trap. So, this is a method for removing volatile analytes uh, from liquid or solid samples. No? So, usually the, the uh, intention of Persian, uh, Persian trap is the 100% removal of volatile components from a sample. Okay? Ayan. So, ayan, goal nga na yan, no? So, basically what you do here is you bubble in a purging gas uh, such as nitrogen gas. Okay, and then the uh, vapor coming out from the sample will be collected using a trap, no? Usually, parang, 
parang similar sa SP, no? Uh, it's a uh, material that is able to um, collect, no? Your uh, volatile analyte. Okay, then afterwards, you dislodge the uh, adhering analyte doon sa trap, either by uh, thermal uh, treatment or sometimes by using a re releasing solvent. Next, you have your stir bar sorption. Okay. So, sa stir bar sorption, you, you're using a uh, magnetic stir, stir bar coated with a special material that has um, strong affinity towards your analyte uh, molecules. No? So, this is 100 times more sensitive for trace analysis. So, what you do here is that you have your sample uh, dissolved in a uh, certain solvent. You place the stir bar coated with uh, a coating material, okay, and then uh, you do magnetic steering, okay. So after some time, yung analyte will be pre-concentrated onto that special coating. And afterwards, you take the magnet, the uh, stir bar, and then transfer it in a solvent that will dislodge or extract out the adhering analyte molecules. Okay, or sometimes you can uh, even dislodge the analyte via thermal desorption. So, that is stir bar desorption. No? So, again, for trace analysis, this is very uh, useful. Then, lastly, you have your chemical derivatization. No? Actually, on chemical derivatization, this is the last option as much as possible. Uh, because if you're, if you're doing chemical derivatization, uh, normally this uh, shortens the lifetime no. Uh, column, no, sa gas chromatograph because yung sa mga excess na derivatizing agents, no, normally they uh, destroy the stationary phase na column. Okay? So, you do chemical derivatization, no, so ano yung purposes ito? Uh, number one, to increase the volatility or decrease the polarity of your compounds, no, so to uh, give you reasonable Elution times no, for your analyte uh, to improve the thermal stability of your uh, analyte molecule. Okay. Uh, another is to increase the detector response. No? So, for example, you're analyzing a, uh, uh, an alcohol, for example. However, uh, using FID, okay, because the concentration of the particular alcohol is very, very low, FID is not enough or not sufficient. So, what you can do is you can uh, derivatize the molecule by adding halogenated functional groups. And then afterwards, use an ECD detector. So, in this way, you're able to, you were able to enhance the uh, uh, sensitivity of analysis by uh, improving detector signal, no? you know, generation detector signal. Okay? Another is to improve the separation and reduce staining, no? Because uh, normally, if you have a very polar analyte and you're using a semi-polar or polar stationary phase, uh, this is prone to tailing, no? Because of the high interaction between uh, polar compounds, okay? So, to reduce the uh, polarity, you uh, derivatize the polar functional group, Okay? into a less polar functional group. And uh, another is to enlarge the substrate spectrum. No? If you're doing a GCMS, all right? so one way to, to improve the sensitivity is to make the analyte molecule larger all right? so that you get a uh, larger uh, mass spec response. Common uh, derivatization techniques Okay, so may have four groups yan, no? So, silylation involves the addition of uh, silene groups, no? So, mga silicon base. Acylation, you add in an acyl group. Okay, alkylation, you add an alkyl group. And esterification, you form an ester. Alright, so, uh, my example ito. So, one example of a procedure that requires chemical derivatization is yung tinatag na FAME analysis, no? Sa food analysis ito. FAME stands for fatty acid metal ester analysis. This is used for 
um, determining okay the uh, fatty acid composition of a given oil sample no so kunwari meron kang uh, uh, virgin coconut oil for example so you want to determine what are the uh, fatty acid components of this uh, VCO sample no ilang percent yung lauric meristic uh, oleic no say no so to do that you have to first transesterify all right your sample no so you do that by uh, first mixing your sample dissolving your sample in uh, a mixture of methanol and toluene then you add some base no so this is uh, this is to induce transesterification converting your triglycerides into fatty acid methyl esters okay and then afterwards the sample is injected okay dun sa uh, chromatograph no because if you're going to uh, just uh, convert your sample into fatty acids okay they are too polar no so shadow mataas ang kanilang boiling points okay but uh, but as an ester they are more volatile and they have intermediate polarity okay so you, you prevent yung mga tailing all right and yung uh, high uh, boiling points no? nalolower natin yung uh, boiling points ng sample okay so that's it for gas chromatography so again i'll be posting the assessment uh, test in our fb group page